Oh my god, I have react interview coming up. I don't know what to do. Uh, do I do loop code? Do I do conceptual questions? What kind of coding are they going to ask? I'm so lost. Uh, hey, are you somebody who's feeling the same way? Well then, I got something for you. In this series, I'm going to help you understand what React questions can be asked. I've even created a full React interview guide for you. Check that out here. It's completely free. Check it out. It's got some of the most commonly asked React questions that I was asked as an interviewee, but also the questions that I usually ask as an interviewer in my years of experience as a staff engineer at Paper and Slack. So check it out. Also, if you are new to React, First of all, you belong here. You've made it, you're here. This is the place you were meant to be. But if React feels hard to you right now, I've created a whole course on O'Reilly that helps you understand each topic one concept at a time. So check that out. And now let's start solving a React question. The question we're gonna look at is gonna be from this free React interview guide, which by the way, if you don't have, the link is gonna be in the description. Check it out, it's completely free and it has a list of interview questions that were asked to me. So I'm sharing it with you so you can prepare. So the question is gonna be this one, a carousel slideshow component. So the topic is, you're tasked with building a responsible, a responsive and accessible carousel component or slideshow component in React, the component should support looping functionality, smooth CSS transitions, and an autoplay feature that allows slides to advance automatically. Requirements are display a list of images or content slides in a horizontal layout, allow users to navigate slides using previous next buttons and dot indicators, implement looping functionality so the carousel seamlessly transitions from the last slide back to the first and vice versa, Support autoplay mode where slides advance automatically after a set interval. Pause autoplay, ensure the carousel is keyboard accessible. Okay, so first of all, before we even get, uh, dive deep into this, typically the question that the, the interviewer would have given would be this one, just you are tasked with a responsible, uh, responsive and accessible carousel component. Um, and they would probably tell you that it should support looping functionality, smooth CSS transitions, and an autoplay feature. So using that, we're gonna write down requirements and we're also gonna uh, verify our assumptions. Let's do that here in this component itself. I've already started a component, so let's write down our requirements. So the first thing is, let's write down requirements. Now, once you've written down the requirements, it's also important to verify any assumptions you might have about this question. So first of all, um, I am assuming that there is an API that I can fetch the images from and I will ask the interviewer this. Then I'm also assuming that there are more than one images. I'm also going to ask them that. I'm also assuming that we're not going to worry about caching at this point. So that is another assumption I will verify with the interviewer. This way, any if you have any other assumptions that comes to your mind, make sure you verify that with the uh, interviewer. Also, it is also a good practice to ask which kind of libraries are allowed to be used. For example, you might ask if I can use shad scene components, or you might ask if there is a design system library they would ask you to use. Typically in an interview, they don't want to see you use another library like shad scene, so I would just verify that. Okay, now that we have our requirements, let's get coding. Let's implement this. I'm assuming basic familiarity with React in here, but if any of these topics are unfamiliar to you, I'm going to link a resource that I've created for you, which is a React course that helps you understand React concepts and fundamentals in a lot more detail. So check that out, it's gonna be right here. Now let's get into it. I have a constant list of images, and I'm gonna assume that this is what the uh, React interviewer gave me. This component actually does not fetch the image, but it's possible that your interviewer asks you to fetch images from an endpoint. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a slide. So let's create a slide component. And in the slideshow component, we just wanna render the slide at a time. So now technically we have the image loading, but we wanna style it. So let's add a style sheet. 
I added some style to the slide and now it looks nice. However, we are not able to navigate, but this implements the first ability to render images in horizontal layout. Perfect. Now let's navigate slides using previous next buttons and dot indicators. Let's implement that. Second step. Okay. Now that I have my slide and slideshow, let's implement the second step, which is to navigate slides using previous next buttons and dot indicators. For this, I'm going to create another component called controls. I'm going to implement this function controls where I've added a left button and a right button. I've already styled it a bit so it looks nice like a button. And I've added a handle decrement function and a handle increment function. Now what I want to happen is that when I click handle decrement, I want to be able to set the last slide or the previous slide. And when I handle increment, I want to increase the index to set it to the next element in the array. Let's do that now. So I've got controls component here. I'm going to pass it the active index. And then I'm going to pass it the set of functions as well. So on handle decrement, we want to set the index to be active index minus one. And on increment, I want to set it to active index plus one. But remember, it is a looping functionality. So if I reached index of zero, I'm going to switch back the slideshow to the last image. So let's do that. In handle decrement, if active index is zero, set index to total minus one. And same way in handle increment, if active index is at the end of that, then switch it back to the first index. Go back. This was my first image and now I'm on the third image. And now if I keep pressing, I'm in a looping functionality. Perfect. That implements the slides using previous next buttons. And now let's implement dot indicators. And now in order to implement that dot functionality that helps us navigate between slides, I'm going to add a component called indicators. And I'm going to pass all of my images to it. I'm going to pass the active index. and I'm going to set, pass the set index as well. And then within the indicators, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is loop through the images and add a button for each element. And when you click on that button, it should switch the current index to the index of the item that you clicked. Uh, it's similar to the previous and right buttons. So with that, let's test it. If I click on the second image, I'm switched to the second image. If I click on the third, I'm, click I'm on the third. And if I use the buttons, I can still navigate. I don't have this active functionality, so let's fix that. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Now this indicates which button, which item is active. That implements the second requirement, which is implement slides using previous next buttons and dot indicators. Let's add the autoplay functionality. Okay, let's talk about what is the autoplay functionality. Basically, when you when you click on an element, it navigates. With the autoplay, we want to set the slides on a timer so that they set they display for a certain time and then navigate to the next element. So it's kind of like using set interval. So we're going to implement autoplay functionality. And when we are on an image, we want to be able to pause the autoplay. When the mouse is hovered on the image, it is actually paused on that image. So let's do that. We have some handy functionalities available to us called on mouse enter, on mouse leave, and we're going to use that. So first, let's do the autoplay functionality. We're going to use uh, an interval. So let's set it up. In order to set up intervals, we're going to use something called use ref hook. Now, if you're not familiar with use ref hook, I created a video on it. Check it out. It talks about why use ref is used for creating intervals and timers. Check that out. First step, let's set an interval. In order to use this interval, I'm going to use a use effect hook and I'm going to start the autoplay. And then when it stops uh, on cleanup, I'm going to provide a cleanup function of stop autoplay. I've set up my autoplay so that on when the page loads or when the component mounts, I start the autoplay and when the component unmounts and there's a cleanup function, I stop the autoplay. So what I want to do is when I start the autoplay, I want to be able to start my timer. If the timer is already going, then I don't want to do anything just like how intervals work. But if the timer is uh, but if there is no timer yet, then I want to start a timer and at the end of that timer, like let's say a second or two, I want to increment to the next image. And how can I increment to the next image? By using set index. So let's add that to start autoplay. Okay, so look, I, we're already looping already. 
I'm gonna add 1500 so it doesn't loop that fast. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of glitch, right? You'll see that. And that's happening because I haven't cleaned up on top autoplay. So let's clean it up. Okay, now what I'm doing is if interval ref dot current has a value, which means a timer is already going, don't do anything. However, if there is nothing, then start an interval. And at the end of that interval, I want to increment the image to be the next image. And I'm also dividing it by images.length so I don't go out of bounds. Then on the cleanup function, I'm going to clear the interval and I'm also going to set my ref to null. And that helps implement this autoplay functionality. I also need to pause it when I'm on, when I'm hovering on it. So let's add that. For that, I'm going to add an on mouse enter. By the way, if you're curious which AI tool I'm using, I'm using Augment AI. I made a video on that. That's going to be linked right here as well. <laughs> Okay, so on mouse enter, I'm just going to stop autoplay, but when I leave the mouse, I'm going to continue playing the autoplay. And now if I hover on this, let's test it with 500. Now if I hover on this, it should stop. Are you stopping? Okay, reload the page. So, okay, I'm hovering, it stopped. And then when I leave, it continues. Now if I hover, it stopped. Perfect. Also, one thing that I want you to make sure is that as you're implementing your code, make sure you're also testing it. Now we've got the looping, we've got the autoplay functionality. The final stuff is to add keyboard support for navigation. Now what keyboard support we want? We want that when we're on this button, if I click, uh, if I hit enter, it should switch and it is switching. And the reason for that is because I'm using a button component and button component automatically uses keyboard functionality because it comes with the button itself because it's a semantic element. That's the benefit of using semantic HTML. Now, there's some things that are missing. So remember we've added the slide component. We gave an image but we and we gave an alt tag, but we haven't described what this component is. So when a person lands on this component, they have no idea what this component is. So let's do that. For that, we're gonna add aria labels also going to add a tab index of zero so that it's tabbable which means if I land on this page I reload this page actually I don't need tab index of zero because that slideshow component is not an interactive element the button inside it is okay but I also want to add an aria label slideshow component slideshow of now we're going to describe this and this is slideshow of tourist sites in Europe now we also want to give it a role of region which lets screen readers know that this is an important area. And we can also give it an area on focus. That means when the mouse is within, uh, when the keyboard is within the element to stop playing, just the same thing as on mouse enter and the same with on blur. When the focus moves away, start auto playing. And that makes this component accessible. So let's give it a quick test. One thing you'll notice is that in order to go through the sliders, you also have to hit the tab key. Right now, this is only three elements, so it doesn't matter. But if this was 20 different images, this would be a poor experience. So one thing that you can mention to your interviewer, and if you have time, you can implement is be able to keyboard navigate between them. So use arrow keys to navigate between the items instead of using tab keys. That's going to be a step up. But with this, we have implemented all five requirements of our product. So I hope this video was helpful for you in preparing for the React interview question that may come up, which is the slideshow components. This is one of my favorite React interview question to ask because it displays a lot of the skills that a person might have. If you want another video like this, give this a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments if there was a React interview question that was asked to you and that stumbled you or you found it easy to understand. If you want to try out another React interview question, click this video. Bye.